Well, good afternoon and welcome back. Uh, we're three days into practice right now and, and things are going well. It's a, a lot of evaluating of, of young guys. Um, just kind of seeing, we know we're going to play a few of them, so that's what we're looking at right now, just which of those young guys potentially has a chance. We're still probably oh, four or five days away at least from being able to, to really hone in on a few guys, but uh, the guys are in great condition. Coach Kramer and his staff did a phenomenal job, uh, as usual, all summer long, so uh, I felt really good with everybody coming in. Uh, we brought in 95 guys. C.J. Smith's the only one that, that uh, is not practiced yet. He will practice or at least be cleared to run uh, August 14th, and, and uh, we're really optimistic because C.J.'s a quick healer, and he's uh, ahead of schedule as it is right now. So. Um, you know, we've got a lot of holes to fill on, on defense especially and, and even some critical spots on offense and, and the guys are working hard so I'll open up for questions. Uh, not really, I wouldn't say wide open. I, I, I feel pretty comfortable with uh, Trey Dempsey will be the free safety. Uh, Andrew Smith will play a lot of safety as well. He's playing both the free and the strong. Uh, Chris Board uh, will be the strong safety. Uh, especially in our, our, all of our base packages. Once we get to nickel, uh, then Andrew Smith will enter the game a little bit more as that backside safety where you saw Heegs and stuff play in the past. But uh, I, I feel good about Chris. I feel good about Trey. I feel good about Andrew. Now we've got to find that fourth guy, and that's where it's, it's pretty wide, fourth and fifth, and it's really wide open. How about your running back position? Uh, a lot of depth and a lot of competition. We feel really good about uh, Chase and King having productive seasons as a backup last year to John, and, and they're kind of getting the lion's share of the of the load right now. Uh, but I don't see us early on in the season giving it to one of those two guys 30 times. I, I see it being 15 to 20 potentially for for both guys, and uh, Lance Dunn will will be a factor in that as well. And, and we've got some young guys, and, and Darius Anderson's doing, really doing a nice job. So it'll truly be by committee there. I would say not early in the season, but potentially as we move forward, both those two guys, uh, Demaris Purifoy and Bruce Anderson, are, are really jumping out at us on, on film on some of the special teams drills and stuff. And I would think one of them, and I couldn't tell you until we get into a scrimmage situation, which one has a better chance. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't play both of them, but one of them potentially will have a chance. Is it safe to say that by committee is a little bit more of a theme we're going to hear this year? Hope not a quarterback, um, and you know, but uh, you know, we've got to play more linemen, both sides of the ball. We've got to play a few more linebackers. You know, I, I don't think by corner. Once you get CJ and Champ back, those two guys are going to play. If it's an 85 game, 85 play uh, game snap, they're going to play every one. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got to have more kids contribute without question. What's the linebacker core look like with the mix of those that being one? Yeah, I've been impressed the, the, in the three practices, the, the amount of progress that uh, uh, MJ Stump has made. You know, we've been talking about MJ for a while here, but he's also backed up guys like Esley and Travis and LJ that were, you know, great, great players here. And, and he's figured it out. He understands where his role is. He's really productive right now in these first three days. He's really confident running around. Um, so he'll be a guy that, that we're counting on. I, I see... Uh, being really hard to knock MJ out of the starting lineup. And then I've been really impressed with Pierre Tucker. We just got to keep Pierre healthy. And he's had a great summer. He really worked hard with Jim. And he's been flying around and looking really good uh, as well. So uh, yeah, Nick, uh, we're counting on Nick because he played a lot of critical snaps for us last year. And, and then Pierre and, and MJ. And uh, Matt Plank's doing a really nice job. Matt Plank will be in the mix. Matt is kind of our backup Mike, but we can utilize Nick in some other places. So I feel good about those four. Now who's that fifth and who's that sixth? And it could come from some young guys that we've talked about in the past, Marlette, Jordan, those type of guys. Yeah, you bet. He and Brinkman. You know, those two guys, we, we, I think we hit two good ones there at, at linebacker. Both those guys, special teams drills and stuff that we do, they really stand out. Now, how much can we use those guys on special teams early on to see if they can get into the mix as a linebacker? Because if you play safety or linebacker or tight end uh, in, in these systems, offensively and defensively, you, you can't play early. It just, it's too complicated for those guys. So, uh, but we also know if those guys can get in the mix early on special teams, 
uh, if we have a long season, you know, by game five or game seven, they can help us. Do you need to talk much about expectations? Oh, you know, we've talked about two things. We ain't staying humble and staying hungry. And uh, that's kind of the, the mode we've talked about ever since we got back from Frisco last year. Is, you know what? Be humble. What, what we've done is phenomenal. Uh, but now we've got to stay hungry. And those are the two things we kind of focus on. Coach, your kicking game, where do you stand right there? Uh, ben will punt for sure. Um, he's our only kicker in fall camp. Um, with numbers, you know, you, you only can have 95 in, so uh, we only brought uh, Ben in and, and Fish in because we could work on our long snapping. Uh, Ben's done a little bit of kickoffs in fall camp. We probably won't tax him much there, uh, but today was our first day of PAT field goal, and, and he was our he was our field goal kick, and uh, um, he's just got to get more comfortable with that. I, I'm comfortable with Ben. I mean, that's if you're going to put a guy in 26,000 seat stadium. Um, to kick a 30-yard field goal, 40-yard field goal. Uh, I feel good about Ben, but he, he's got to have a lot of progress. You know, he's gonna, it's going to take him a while. Um, the other thing is, you know, he's also our holder. So now that throws Cole Davis or Easton Stick kind of into the fold, into a really important position. Um, but, you know, he'll be the only kicker probably in, unless we have a bunch of injuries where we'd get another kicker in, you know, middle, middle to late August. The rule still, you can bring everybody in the first day of class. Is that the rule? Yeah, well, on the 24th is when we'll try to get a few more bodies in here. Is it easier for you this time around than last year? I, well, I, it's, I don't know if it's easier. It's always, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I've got an unbelievable staff. Uh, we've got a great administration team. So that stuff makes it a lot easier. Um, but... Uh, just having the same staff here, you know, continuity is so important in, in all athletics. I, you know, everybody talks about players leaving and stuff, uh, and you never want many many players to leave your program. Uh, more, you don't want coaches to leave your program. And, and for us, we were so fortunate. I, you know, so thankful to, to Matt Larson for um, letting us keep everybody together because, you know, when you have the success that we have, people come calling and try to get your guys and and. Um, I think Matt did a great job of, of uh, helping us kind of keep some of these guys. Chris, you expect all the other kickers to show up then? Absolutely. They, they will. It's just, you know, like we had a, uh, we had a defensive end get a hamstring. Well, we're not going to bring a, uh, another kicker in. Jeff, we'll bring the next defensive end in so we don't tax those guys. If we lose a wide out, we're going to bring another wide out in. You'd have to lose a couple guys at a certain positions where you'd say, okay, you can overcome that because you have enough bodies in there. Um, th this time of year, uh, everybody gets taxed, there's no question. But your DBs and your wide receivers are running uh, so much all day long at practice that you want to make sure you have enough bodies so that you don't wear down a Zach Vra or wear down an RJ Zandowski or a Jordan Champion. So uh, early on this first week to 10 days, we'll replace anybody that's injured or leaves a program with another uh, position player. If we get to after that first scrimmage on the 15th, uh, then I'd look at bringing in Barney or look at bringing in Ian or somebody like that. How's fall camp changed since you were a player? Well, there were no real rules, I don't think. When I was a player in the mid-80s, I remember having three days and, and putting pads on in the evening and stuff and, uh, and going out there for X amount of hours. And um, it's, uh, it's, Social media wasn't any around. I didn't have a cell phone. Nobody could get a hold of me. It was kind of nice. <laughs> right, right now, this is you know, it, you still got to tell tell the guys don't bring your phones to the to the meeting room and stuff because they've been locked into their phones for all summer and stuff. But uh, um, you know, they're they're so much better shape now than they were five years ago. You know, we were so fortunate to have so many freshmen at least come for a little bit of the summer uh, and get acclimated to Jim's system and. and uh, um, to get around our guys, so it's uh, they're, in, they're in great, great shape. Was it more on preservation rather than last man standing? Yeah, yeah, but you still got to get your work done too. A absolutely, we we've got to be smart with our guys, especially at positions where we feel pretty confident in. Uh, but there's some other positions that boy, we we've, we've got to grind those guys to find out who can last, who can be that last man standing, so to speak, um, and. Uh, and that, that's it's a fine balance because you don't want to wear down all your wide receivers while you look for a, a safety to play or wear down all your offensive linemen where you look for that 
third or fourth defensive lineman. So it's a, it's a pretty good balance. But that's, we do a lot of half line things uh, or a lot of one on one situations, competitive matchups where you're not having to go 11 on 11. Well, I mean, do you have ways of finding toughness other than oh, yeah. three days? Yep. Uh, Oklahoma drills and, and stuff where you're uh, just one on one situations with guys. We do all of our special teams things are, are more geared to getting off a block, being able to make a tackle in a, in a short, close space uh, when we film that. And we keep, track of, we keep track of wins and losses and post them up every day. So, uh, you know, tomorrow I know we're going to have a, um, a kickoff cover period where we're going to go uh, somebody blocking a, a kickoff cover guy running down, and we're going to do three or four lines of it. And, and we'll film all that, we'll watch all that, and we'll chart wins and losses and post it up there because we've got to find out who the more competitive guys are. You're going to lose some of those battles, but do you get back up in the line? The other thing you find out quickly is, you know, that guy got beat. Did he come back or did he sit in the back of the line for a while? You'll see guys. That's where Chris Board was so impressive to me uh, as an early on player. He and DeLuca, they were always back in that line. They were always back in that line. They didn't care if Andrew Grothman was at the top of the of board or, or Grant Olson or Carlton Littlejohn. Those guys came up there and said, hey, I'm going to compete. How's Carlton looked so far? He's, look, he's looked really good. Um, you know, he's had, a, he's had a phenomenal summer uh, and, and working out with, with the wide receivers and tight ends on his own. He's, he's really sharp. He's really focused. We're putting more and more things on his plate offensively to, to be able to, to check a lot more things at the line of scrimmage based on what he sees. And uh, he's got such a great comfort level at that right now. Coach, describe your backup QB. Is that going to go right till August 28th? Probably won't go that far, but we've got to put both those guys in uh, a good scrimmage situation on the 15th, and then we do a number of different two-minute and red zone situational uh, periods before the 15th and probably a week after. I'd like to have that backup pretty close to being set on the 22nd or 23rd, right before school starts, so that everybody kind of knows if something happened, who would go in? Uh, but the, but I think both guys have had a great first three days, and they're they're so much improved from last fall to the spring, and then spring to the summer because they 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 worked. I mean, Carson had those guys working out with them, all, every, you know, every day with those wide receivers and tight ends. What's your confidence level? We, we've got a lot of people there. We've got a lot of depth there. Uh, you know, Andrew Bonnet we think is a, is an All American type player. Uh, I think Lucas Albers uh, is uh, all-conference, potentially an all-American type player. Um, we've got to get some things out of like a Connor Wentz. Jeff Ilias, we're utilizing him a little bit more right now. He's gotten a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger so that he doesn't have to always flex out. He'll play on the line of scrimmage some. So we've got quite a bit of depth there. Is Bonnet kind of a unique position guy? I don't know what you call him. That's a good question because we always look to see what the defense is calling him. You know, a great example, um, when we were at Missouri State, they, they called him a tight end. And so we'd look to see what they were bringing in their defense based on when Bonnet was in the game. And then uh, at the championship game, Illinois State said he was strictly a fullback. So, um, you know, he's, for us, he's everything. He's a fullback. Um, he's a tight end. And, and I'll be honest, if it were third and two, I wouldn't mind lining him up by himself back there in a one-back set because I, I think the kid will find a way to get two or three yards. Once Coach Palasek finally put in the belly play that I liked, we were able to run some fullback belly and get seven, eight, nine a pop because the kid's so hard to bring down. How hard is it to find guys like it? It seems like any you said success finding players that can be sort of a Swiss Army knife for that position. You know, it, you just keep turning over every stone and seeing what you find. I mean, he was a he was a real small partial scholarship guy and uh, just has continued to develop and, and uh, continue to, to grow and improve and develop. Coach, with RJ's success, how is it easier now in fall camp to maybe give a guy a green and white true freshman to say, you saw what you can do, you can do that as well? Yeah, we talked about it even uh, last night and this morning of who's going to be that guy. You know, who, who's going to – we we can talk about all the guys that, that we know about right now, but for us to be really successful this year, it's going to be the guys that none of us are going to talk about today. You know, Greg Menard had a really good football season for us last year as the third defensive end, but nobody really knew what was going to happen. 
RJ the same way. You know, Austin Kunert, nobody really knew much about, uh, and, and the kid ended up starting almost every game for us last year. So I, I don't know who that guy's going to be. I, I hope to have a better or guys. And we need, we need four or five on each side of the ball. Even though we have so many guys back on offense, we need four or five guys to, to step up and, and, and give us another threat or to give us some more snaps in the old lines. So we can give Lando or, or something like that a break. And, um, and on defense as well, I, I'm not sure who that guy's going to be. But um, you know, if, if it were MJ Stump, guys know about MJ Stump, but MJ hasn't done it yet in a game situation. Chris Board the same way. Those guys I, I'm really excited about. Well, it, Jordan Champion's done the best job of, of, of leading. He's been phenomenal all through the spring. Coach Kramer talked about him in the summer and then just these first three days. Uh, Jordan is a great leader uh, vocally and, and by example. And it's hard from a corner's position, but uh, just the way he practices and the way he kind of commands guys, I think he'll be one of the prime leaders. We've got to find another one. We've got to find a, a core guy. Uh, it doesn't have to be a senior, and we've talked about that. I think MJ Stump can be that guy. I think Nick, Nick DeLuca can be that guy. It's going to have to come from somebody inside there. Uh, and uh, there's, you don't have to be a rah-rah guy. You just got to do your job and, and be effective. Um, and so it's still kind of a, a work in progress. Coach, can you, can you characterize what Carson Wentz means for you as a head coach? Well, he's a good security blanket. You get your quarterback back for your senior year. I mean, that, that's, you don't see that many programs in America that have a guy back. Everybody talks about, you know, you look at the Missouri Valley, and I don't know how many teams have their quarterback back, but for us, what, what a great, great thing to have. I know last year there was talk about the Montana game and North Coast State being an early game. Well, I didn't want to do that to, to Carson. I didn't want to do that to a young offense. I thought we had enough guys back on defense. I just didn't want to do that to a young offense. Well, now it's flipped, and we are playing that game early. Well, I've got unbelievable confidence in our offense, led by Carson, and a lot of guys around him that make him pretty good, too. It's now the defense that, that you're saying, well, we're going to be inexperienced. Well, um, you know, when you, when you have a trigger man that's played as many games uh, as Carson has, and, and more importantly, the type of games. You know, it's not like we were winning playoff games 35 to 7. I mean, we had a lot of, out of, you know, pressure situations, not stressful situations, but pressure situations. And that's how you become really good is by having success in those pressure situations. And so um, for, for me as a head coach and for us as a coaching staff, it's a great security blanket knowing that we have a guy that uh, has the utmost confidence. And more importantly, the guys have the utmost confidence in him. Well, we're excited about the challenge. I think it's great for FCS football. I mean, to, to get the traditional powers uh, like ourselves in Montana to play, to get good cross-country, cross-conference rivals to play, I think that's great. I mean, uh, I hope it continues to happen. It's hard because for us to do that, it cost us really an FBS game. And um, so we've got to pick and choose when we do those. But I think... Playing in Kansas State in 2013, there was a great crowd, a lot of people. It was, it was loud. Iowa State was loud. Uh, there won't be as many people at Montana, but it will be probably louder than both situations. And, and so I think it's a great challenge. It, it lets you know where your football team is uh, early on. And, and hey, we're, we're going to have our hands full trying to go in there and find a way to get a win. You talk about this confidence. You talk about your security blanket. Can we expect your guys' offense to maybe push the envelope in ways we haven't seen in the last couple of years? Expect some surprises, and what's that conversation like with somebody like Polisac? We just got to do our job, and that's the thing. We can't say we got to do more than what we're, you know, we're asking them to do. They just got to do their job, and it's a process. We, we're not going to put up with what what I saw like at practice today. We're not going to put up 40 points. Carson would tell you we weren't as sharp today offensively. It's a process. We've got a, we've got a long ways to go with 27 more practices to get ready. But we also know that you can't press, you can't press. 
you got to let the game come. You got to take if they're going to play a soft defense, we got to just dink and dunk. If they're going to put everybody up there, then Zach and Carson and RJ got to make some big plays. But you can't. You don't know until what the defense is going to do to you. So, you know, I don't want those offensive guys to press and think, boy, we've got to win games 45, 42. So we've got a young defense. You know, if if, we, if that's what we have to do, we'll figure it out as the game goes, and that's what we'll have to do. But in the same respect, you know, we, we may have to win a 17-14 game, 10-7 game. You've got to make the plays that you're asked to make um, when they're presented in front of you. And I do not want those guys on offense to press to think, we got a young defense. Boy, if we don't put up a ton of points, we're going to be in trouble. Then we won't put up a bunch of points. we just got to go through the process. We're going to uh, end right there with Coach Klein. And thank you, Coach, for your time. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. It's definitely up there. You know, I compared to like opening last year against Iowa State and then the national championship as well. It's a good measure uh, for us to go out there and compete with those guys um, and measure up, see where we're at. And, uh, you know, it's just a lot of excitement being able to, to play a weekend early, uh, to be on national television and all of that. So uh, there's a lot of excitement going on, and, and we're definitely ready to go out there in due time. Carson, talk about the tools you have offensively. Uh, big offensive line coming back. Some heavy back still. Yeah, we got a lot of guys, you know, and quite frankly, last year we spread the ball out a lot, and I think we're going to do that as well this year. You know, we got at least three good tight ends in the passing game, you know, with Lucas Albers, Andrew Bonnet, and Jeff Phillies that we all think are extremely effective. We got two for sure rock solid wide receivers in Zach Bra and uh, RJ, and looking for some young guys to step up there as well. And then Chase Morlock is a heck of a football player. You'll see him kind of all over the field. Um, and then with King and Lance and even Darius Anderson. And then just a number of other guys. You know, we got weapons all over the place. Our O line, the entire O line is, is back more or less. And so, you know, we know we have a lot of guys to do it. We just got to take it one, one step at a time. A little different a year ago today when we were talking to you. What's the difference? I guess I just have a lot more confidence. And, you know, now I, I realize I'm the, the old guy on the team as well as Mr. Vra over there, the grandpa of the team now. But uh, I just I have a lot more confidence, a lot more uh, leadership. Uh, a lot more imp, uh, influence in the leadership aspect. So. What was that elite, was it elite 11 and Bella's call? Yep. What was that like playing? It was just a really good experience to be out there with some really good quarterback coaches, some really good quarterbacks from across the nation, and, and just to be around those guys in that competition and to learn some things. Uh, it was just a really good experience for me. You were a comp player, right? Yep. So what, what, what does that entail? You know, you just helped out. the. There's 18 high school kids. Um, they narrowed that down to 11 as the week progressed. But, you know, you kind of just did the workouts with them a little bit, kind of encouraged them. We got a chance to speak to all of them and kind of tell our story. So it was just a really good experience. Who are the coaches there? A couple? Can you name a couple or who are the? Uh, Jordan Palmer, Trent Dilfer, guys like that were out there. So. Yep. Where are you putting all this talk about your professional prospects? In the back of my mind. I mean, it's I just got to take care of this season, and the rest of that will fall into place however it may. But, uh, you know, I'm 100% locked in for, for this year and, and winning games, especially opening up against Montana. Can you give us a little insight into what your relationship with Randy Hedberg is right now, how he's helping you grow and, and mentally take your game to another level right now? Yeah, it's been really good offseason with Coach Hedberg. I, I was able to go up there um, this spring and then in the summer and just kind of talk to, talk to him about just different passing concepts and different things and, and reads and stuff. Um, and kind of just bounce some ideas off each other. That's, you know, I've never really had that before. We did a little last summer, but you know, now that we've had a year to kind of work together, um, it's kind of on another level. So it's just really nice to, to have the respect of him, and I respect the heck out of him as well. Um, but for him to respect my opinion as well, it goes a long way. So it's just a really good relationship with him and the rest of these coaches. Is it watching a lot of film? Is it why, I mean, how do you expand your game now? How do you get them to give you that confidence, like you said the other day at practice, to be able to make those decisions, uh, you know, at the line. Yeah, it's watching a lot of film. I mean, it it shows from even just the stuff I did last year as well. You know, they, they see, and we, we just talk about, okay, what did you see here? You know, this spring I actually 
came up and broke down a couple uh, games and just kind of wrote what play I would probably choose here instead of the one we ran. So just stuff like that for them to see kind of my knowledge and see where I'm at with stuff so we can kind of go forward with it. Coach, you mentioned all the tools you have on offense. Is there a kind of a recognition that I got to spread that ball out because I have so many playmakers, or is it just throw it to the open guy? Yeah, I've always been a guy who's just throw it to the open guy mindset. You know, take what the defense is giving me if that means taking the 20 yard route or the check down and anything in between. You know, I'm not big on uh, choosing a guy and staying locked in on him. You know, that really only comes into play when it's man coverage and you find your best matchup. But other than that, I just you know, I, I know we got the guys at all these positions that can get the job done and get the job done very well. So uh, it makes my job easier as well. Coach, you've talked about the coach, excuse me. Um, what, how's it, what's the feel like having every coach back, and what does that say about the program? It means a lot, you know, to go out and win it, the fourth straight national championship here and to have all the coaches return. Um, something I didn't really think about until, you know, we opened fall camp here and I really realized, hey, everyone is back. Um, that says a lot about what we have here. It's truly something special in the tradition and how much it means to not just the players, but to the community and then the coaches as well. It, it's a really, really special place here. I mean, it's, it's cool, but, you know, we're 100% focused on Montana and, you know, that's down the road and we'll get there in, in due time. But, yeah, we're focused on Montana and just learning, learning the playbook and these youngsters. Going. Coach, you quickly, because you make as many plays as you are, and you saw the retreat too. Does that make politics nervous and, and Chris, or they can see that mentality when you stop and run? I'll never say that to you, Coach. Yeah, I, there's some things looking back last year where I could have definitely protected myself a little better. Um, I know I still got to learn that and continue because I'm a, I'm a competitor. Um, it's hard to kind of train that mentality uh, out of you at, at times, but. You know, there's 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 always things. There's a, there's a time and a place to, to lower his shoulder and take a hit, and there's a time and a place to either go down or go out of bounds. So I got to learn that as well. Penalize them for a legal question. I forgot they were playing UND. <laughs> Used to the grandpa? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I do. It started right after the season, um, not having my senior class back, and really, you know, just playing with the younger guys, knowing that everybody I came in with is completely gone. But I just got to step into that role of, you know, almost of a half coach, half player, where I'm coaching everybody um, just as hard as I'm coaching and improving myself. So, you know, it's, it's hit me on and off the field, but I enjoy it. Was that something you had to get over? Um, yeah, it's not much of a factor. It's not really hindering me at all. Right away, it's just kind of more of a shock saying, oh, they're gone. You know, I got to get used to everybody else that's here. But, I mean, overall, having them gone is not impacting me much, but just something that's there. Um, you know, not much. That that game, first game of my career, you know, that's always where everybody's going to have the most butterflies. And, you know, now it just gets better, focus on improving, coaching, and, you know, just playing together as a team. Have you noticed a lot of the young guys seeking out your advice maybe differently than it has been years past? Uh, I do, yeah. A lot of times um, guys will come up to me, you know, obviously ask plays like every young guy should. Sometimes it's people from other positions, and I really think that as, you know, guys really do consider me a leader. If um, running backs are coming up asking me what do I got on a certain pass play, and sometimes I don't even know because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm focused on, you know, what I got there as a receiver, but um, it makes me feel good that young guys are looking up to me. It's all fun and games. We like to tease you in, in your sixth year when calling you a grandpa, but you're, you fought hard to be back here, fought through a lot of health things. How focused are you on, on making this your best season yet, and, and what are you looking to contribute this year? Oh, I've been very focused all off season, especially having that hamstring that hindered me a little bit at the end of the year. Um, you know, that kind of got me down at the end, but I pushed through as much as I possibly could. And this off season has been good. I've been healthy. So just been focused on improving and staying healthy, which is the ultimate goal and having this be the best year. Well, off season, it's not easy here. You're pushing through those workouts. What were your thoughts? I mean, I could be doing something else. But. It, I mean, it's gone through my head. I'd be lying if I'd say it didn't, but um, 
you know, part of the reason coming back, I knew that these off-season workouts were going to be hard. But, you know, if you want to be a great player and have success, those workouts are definitely not going to be easy. And if you want to have that success, you know, you got to push hard. So I knew I was getting myself into and glad I made the choice. Was it an easy call to come back? Or did you, um, you know, at the time, I had so many different factors that were weighing in on the decision. But now that I look back on it, I'm glad I decided to stay. What did you decide academically to do? Weighing a couple options, right? Yeah, I um, decided to pursue an art minor. So taking a couple art classes and then just a couple more to fill the 12 credit minimum I need. What did you see from art that you could see the same position as you? Um, you know, the kid's still getting better. Uh, as you guys saw, he was a huge breakout player last year, and he's still continuing to improve, making catches, barely dropping any passes. and. He's turning into a leader a little bit himself, which is really good to see, helping the young guys out, even though he still is a young guy. But, you know, we love to see the other guys see him as improve as a young player, so it kind of motivates everybody else. You know, well, if RJ can do it, you know, I can too. So it's he's been good for us. Can you shine some light on the core? I know it was early. You guys have had three practices. But um, just kind of your guys as a unit. And I mean, hate to ask you to compare it to any of the classes you've been a part of, but, you know, what's this? You know, we got a lot of experience and a lot of playmakers, as you guys know, and um, with Coach Pivak, like he was last year, new elements of our offense that we've never seen before. So we're just want to keep building on the success that we've had. And like you said, it's hard to compare from other years, but um, we got a lot to look forward to, a lot of good coaching schemes and strategies that we're ready to implement. I don't know if you had a chance to go against your defense much, but what's your impression on what you've seen so far? Um, you know, the defense is getting a lot better. In the spring, we know it was a little tough for them because so many guys were graduated. But, you know, we try not to think about that at all. All we think is the next guy up, you know, he's going to do his job, play the part. And, you know, even through these first three days, they've really improved. I've, I've seen them from the offensive standpoint making right reads. You know, first couple days, guys are still going to make mistakes. That's just how fall camp is. But just seeing them grow through the spring, the summer, and the fall, um, it's seen some good signs with the season coming. So the metal on your shoulder, the reason you're here, right? Yep, so, I do. I have the option to take them out. I have the option to take them out, but I'm just keeping it in. Save me the hassle of two more surgeries that I don't need. Will you eventually have to take them out? Probably not, unless it bothers me in the future. Zach, how good can Carson be? Where's his ceiling? You know, I, I don't know if he has one, honestly. Um, you know, he is athletic, perfect body type. You know, he's smart. He sees the field like nobody else that I've known. And, you know, if he can continue to make plays through the air and on his feet, you know, who knows how good he's going to be. So I'm excited to see how he does this season. Coach talks about staying hungry, staying humble. Is that easier now after four than one, you guys think? And, I mean, is, is the shiny trophy kind of worn off a little bit? You guys are able to, to refocus? Um. You know, a little bit. Um, now that we know that we've had such the same success, we we know that we just put it behind us now. We look to the next season. Right now, the only thing on our mind is just winning the next game. We don't even think about the trophies, even though we've been fortunate to have four of them now. And being able to win, it helps us put it behind us so we can continue to look forward and not just be complacent and say, oh, we've won four. You know, that's good enough for us. So it's helping us move forward and continue to grow.